Eric, 13 NFL seasons, nine with the Chargers, then to the Ravens and the Rams. Then you retired for two years. You hung it up until a fateful call about three weeks ago. And now you are 37 years old and headed to the Super Bowl for the first time in your career. Can you even wrap your head around this? It's a pretty amazing three weeks. I can tell you that to be in at home, hanging out with the kids, making dinners, dropping them off, picking them up, all the sports every night to uh, getting ready for the Super Bowl and everything that's transpired over the last three weeks. So just extremely, extremely like humbled by this opportunity. Uh, th these things don't happen for guys that are retired and long been moved on. And, you know, the opportunity came a knocking and I was there to snatch it up and, and run with it all the way to the Super Bowl. Hey, we got the ball, baby! Let's go back three weeks. You're living the retired life. You and your wonderful wife, Chanel, you guys have four kids who are very active. So you're carpooling them, coaching your son's football team. And then you get a call from Rams defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris, asking if you would be able to come back for the postseason. Had you considered coming out of retirement before getting that call? No, no, not at all. Uh, you know, I had a bunch of teams the first year, so 2020. Some wanted me to play, some wanted me to just mentor the young guys. And it was just, it was a zero chance. Uh, <laughs> mid season, before the season, I, I was I was fully happy with my decision. I went out all, the way I wanted to go out and I was ready for the next step. I, I was just mentally, physically, uh, just not up to the standard uh, that I expect out of myself. So when, that, when it's that time, it's time, just like Tom, uh, explained if you're not 100% committed to what you have to do to be at your best it's just not going to work and then move on to this next season man I was I was just living the dream I was coaching my son's 12U team as the head coach and enjoyed that from July late July all the way to December early December was our last championship game and you know grinding staying up late doing uh scheming and figuring out ways to to make my players better and Doing the uh, doing the stuff with the coaches, and then and then obviously my other three girls are in sports: basketball, volleyball, acro, soccer. So, uh, no. Long story short, no. Did I ever think this was a possibility? Did I ever, in my wildest dreams, think I'd be playing in the NFL again? No. Uh, and then things happen, right? There's so many things that had to happen for them to even think about giving me a call. Uh, and ask if I'd, if one, if I'd be interested, two, was I in somewhat good enough shape to even try it? And three, uh, to go take it and run with it. So I sit here, I try not to get, think about it too much because the job's not done. It's a, it's an amazing opportunity to be in the Super Bowl. I've never been. Uh, these last three weeks have paved our way to earn our right in there. Now we just gotta go finish, it, finish the job. And then I can kind of, reminisce about this last five weeks of my life being this this crazy whirlwind that we're in. Cool, calm, and collected, just like me. The Raheem Morris connection is also yeah. ironic, right? Because he coached you in the Senior Bowl at the beginning of your career, and now in the Super Bowl at the end of your career. And I think when he originally called you, right, he said, hey, can you give us 10, 15 snaps? Well, in this last game, your third game back, you played every snap, you were the Rams leading tackler, the conference championship, everything on the line. I mean, it's gotta be somewhat satisfying to not just be back, but to be contributing in such a major way. Yeah, I mean, Raheem and I go way back, 15 years, 16 years almost. Uh, he coached me in the senior bowl and we just really hit it off. And we always talked about from that experience of us uh, being on the same team, right? Him coaching me at some point in my career and we never got to make that happen, obviously. And we've kept in touch over the years uh, in the off season and in season, just, you know, when you get a connection like that, you try to try to hold on to those relationships. And, you know, there's just so many things that feel like that I'm meant to be here in this moment. Uh, so many things that transpired from, from that and having an opportunity to, to be coached by him now in this situation, a playoff run. You think of the things that happened in San Diego and if that never happened, I never would go to Baltimore. And then I had a great run there, but then I get I get released and I signed with the Rams. And if that never happened, they would have never had me for a year. They would have never known what I was about, giving me this chance to come back, knowing that, that I'm 
you know, staying somewhat shape and I'm kind of a crazy individual. So then, then the, the thought of bringing me back wouldn't even have happened. So there's so many things, never been to Super Bowl. 15 years later, now I'm back. Like, uh, it just feels like for whatever reason, I was meant to come back in this moment to help the guys out. And like you said, started out, could I give them 10, 15 snaps? And now uh, back running the show, uh, which is crazy to think about, but I'm just happy that I'm able to help the guys out and be a player that, that they can count on and be a guy that can make plays Let's like go. I always have. Big down right here, boy. I mean, you talk about being in shape like it's nothing. It's crazy though. I mean, I think you're playing pickup basketball. You were working out, but it's one thing to be in shape. It's another thing to be in football shape. And you had no training camp, no preseason games. That's a whole other beast. You had five days to get out on the field and get your legs under you. How were you so confident that you were going to be able to physically handle it? I love challenges and I love, I knew the outside. I mean, I'm not on social media anymore. Thank goodness, best decision of my life. But I, I knew the outside perception were just gonna be like, this guy can't do it. What are they thinking? And that just fuels me to the core. And listen, I'll bet on me any day of the week. And I know I'm not, I, listen, I wasn't, by no means did I think I was in football shape, but in my mind, I thought, you know, I'm, I've leaned up, I've lost some weight. I still lift every day. Do I run every day? Of course not. I mean, who who wants to run every day? Uh, but I was playing. I was playing five on five basketball with really good guys that know how to play ball. And just that movement, the change of direction, jumping, you know, playing for a couple hours once or twice a week, like that gave me that the idea that at least I could go give it a chance, go get it a shot. Hey, let me go see what I can do on the practice field, and if I can, my body can hold up, and if I can learn the system in a couple of days, which you know, that's what separates me from everybody else. You know, that's what makes me great. And, you know, why not? I mean, this is an opportunity of a lifetime, like a second chance at your dream. How, how do you pass that up? When I'm when I'm sitting there talking to my kids at night or talking to my football team and, and tell them, we don't live with regrets, right? We live today to the fullest. Worry about tomorrow when it comes, it's not guaranteed. How can I go there and say the same thing if I didn't preach what I sow? And uh, I just kept thinking like it's meant to be. I got to give this a chance. I would live with this regret my entire life. And you know me, I don't live with regrets. I'm going to go for it all in and look where we're at. What kind of mental toughness has it taken? I've, uh, I I've always felt like I've been the hardest working guy uh, in, in the room on the team, but I can honestly say I've never worked harder these past three weeks. <laughs> ever in my life whether it's that says a lot because you've always the work ethic you've always been the most studious one too yeah i mean from the from the hours and hours of treatment to rehab to working out to studying the new playbook to being confident in that uh to eating right and and not slipping up anything like i i just wanted to give everything i that i could for this chance to make the most of it and to see how far I've come in three weeks. Did I think I could do it? Obviously, if I didn't think so, I wouldn't even have tried, but I've literally spent more hours trying to be the very best I could be for this team than ever before in my life. And uh, it shows that if you put in the work and you really commit yourself, the mind is powerful and you're able to do anything if you really commit yourself. I know, baby. Realistically, 36 hours after that, this championship game, I was in a rough spot. Like I, I haven't been in that much pain in a long, long time. And it was the harsh reminder of what this game is all about. And uh, it brought me back to earth to, to understand like, that's why I left, right? I couldn't, I couldn't have done this for 20 weeks or 16 weeks. Like there's just no way I can muster it up and finally turned the corner yesterday afternoon I started feeling better and now I feel feel good I don't feel great I will in, in a few more days but I can muster it up for one more I mean this is I, I go back to my old life you know after the Super Bowl right there is no tomorrow there is no next season this is this is everything and in it, in it you watch me play out there and I'm just so free I'm so uh living it up because I know this is a chance of a lifetime and I, I'm playing with house money. I'm playing 
pressure for you. Like there is no pressure on me, right? I, I am who I am. I'm here for a reason and let's go play ball, do what I've done my whole life. And to be able to just go out there and leave everything on the field, uh, I was hurting, but it was so worth it. And now I'm gonna do it all over again in, in a week and a half. They've done messed up. They give me an extra, extra week to, to get my body even more. I'm gonna feel the best I've ever felt in the game this Sunday in the Super Bowl, because now I've really had four weeks to get ready and played some games and it worked out perfect that I'll be at my best and leaving everything I got in this old body left on that Super Bowl game. And you kind of have fresh legs, like to, you know what 100%. I mean? It's like way more than the other guys, you know? Way more so, than everybody yeah. else on the field. So uh, I got every it, it, everything they're gonna get, they're gonna get. So I'm not gonna leave anything to chance, that's for sure. Did you get any texts? Have you got? Have you heard from Philip Rivers or any of the old Chargers teammates just excited for you and probably wishing they were out there with you as well? I've had so many guys, so many guys, coaches, head coaches, everyone across the board uh, from the whole NFL landscape has reached out to me and just said, this is the coolest thing ever. We're so happy you're back. You deserve this. Uh, you've earned it. You know, this is what's been missing uh, from teammates, Phil, I mean, Jam, SP. I mean, we can go John Phillips all the way down. I get Woody, I, everyone. Uh, has reached out over the last three weeks and it's just so i feel like i feel like they're all with me you know like the city of san diego the people that have supported me and been with me for the last 15 years at any point in my career i feel like we're all in this together and we have this unbelievable shot to get a ring the ultimate goal something that i've i've dreamed of doing since the day i stepped foot in the san diego as a draft pick of the Chargers. Like, this is why you play. And to be right here, this is, uh, you know, we're just trying to reiterate to ourselves, like, you know, the job is to win it, not just to be here. And I think, you know, four years ago being in that, I think the guys that were here have learned from that, especially the coaches and, and the guys that were here. And I think that'll help us uh, hopefully get the job done this week, next week. You live in San Diego, your family lives in San Diego. You know the history. San Diego's been through the ringer as far as the NFL is concerned. And a lot of fans, when the Chargers left, they swore off the NFL, but they've been peeking their head out to cheer you on and to support you these last few weeks. They've really enjoyed it. And I wonder if you felt that and if it's meaningful to you to just be a little bit of a bright spot in a city that's gone through quite a bit. I've uh, I've said this, I, you know, to friends and family and I said, you know, told, talking to Chanel, is, I never have felt as much love and just support and kindness and just belief and energy. I mean, I feel the energy like I've never felt in my entire life from just all realms, right? People I don't even know. I just feel I feel like people are pulling for me and I'm really just riding that wave, uh, trying to stay in the moment and stay uh, in that role of what they're asking me to do and and just try to take that all the way for everyone that has been there for me and it's just super surreal super cool but i'm very keen on what's out there and who's supporting me because i, I can feel it in my core as you know i don't have to tell you this team is stacked odell beckham jr jalen ramsey von miller but you know you can have a stacked team full of superstars and they might not necessarily gel what have you seen from this team over the last three weeks that lets you know that this team is different and could take it all the way? Well, I mean, this is a selfless group. Uh, it's hard to mid-season add a couple guys mm -hmm. into the team and try to get, get them up to speed, integrated into the system. Uh, so, you know, Vaughn was coming off an of ankle, so we had to slowly get him back. And then obviously Odell, who's, who's just one of a kind. I mean, yeah, he's a perfect example of perception versus reality. And one of the best dudes I've ever been around it, whether I've been competing against them, whether uh, been at the Pro Bowls together and now as teammates. I mean, he is just a dude that gives it all every day in practice, in the workout, in the in the meeting rooms, just a joy to be around. And of course, he gets the bad rap. But I think over the years, uh, as you mature, you learn that you are who you are and you're confident in yourself. And really, the only opinions that matter are the ones that you care about. And I think just over the last few weeks, we've really just gelled together and we're all peaking at the right time. We all define, defined our roles and understand that we're all here for a reason, right? Like who, who would have ever thought, like Vaughn talks about this all the time, like they, we basically got a full, a Pro Bowl team 
Mm -hmm. We've all been to Pro Bowls together multiple times, mm -hmm. and we're all here in this moment, in this time together for a reason. And Juan uh, has has just done an unbelievable job of just leading us and speaking up and saying those types of things to get us more motivated than ever. That hey man, these just, these things just don't happen, right? And we're just trying to take it and run with it and make the most of it. And we've done that so far. We just got one more to do it. To be fair, you did just join the team, but you have kind of taken over and you're known for your blitzes. Do you think we will see <laughs> any special Weddle blitz package in the Super Bowl? Oh, there's all there's always something up in the air. I mean, I can always change something on the fly. So Love it. Uh, you always have to be wary whether what I'm doing on every snap, and that's one of my strengths, is uh, I fear no one. You have to fear what I'm doing out there and fear what our defense is doing. But at the end of the day, when you have Vaughn and AD, <laughs> Flow on the other side, rushing the passer. I mean, so it's, a lot of times it's good that the rushers rush and the cover guys cover, uh, and we play well off each other. So uh, it's just an amazing, amazing opportunity that we're taking full advantage of. You're about to experience your first Super Bowl week. What are you most looking forward to? I'm most looking forward to Sunday and nothing leading up to it. You won't see me at any parties. You won't see me doing anything uh, other than getting myself ready to play my very best game in my last game of my NFL career. And hopefully holding that trophy and celebrating with my teammates, celebrating with my family and pulling an all nighter till the sun comes up Monday morning and all the way to the rest of my life, I'll be forever be a champion. That's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Nothing more, nothing less. Just being me, being in the moment and enjoying every second of it. That is awesome. Pulling that all nighter, getting that championship, and then carpool duty. Maybe <laughs> yes. it's Monday off, but by Tuesday, you're uh, both back on carpool. Tuesday, we'll be back at it 100%. <laughs> we'll be back making breakfasts, lunches, dropping the kids off, and uh, enjoying that. I've missed my, I haven't seen my kids in uh, going on four weeks. So it's, uh, it's well worth it, but I do miss them. And well, Eric, I appreciate it so much. You know, it's been so fun to cover you throughout your entire career, but then for it to come full circle yeah. like this, Pretty awesome. It, it's a blast. Yeah, it's awesome. So enjoy this week. Soak it all in. And thank you so much for your time. Anytime, Annie. Great to see you. You too.